next lover. What's the next mountain? Uh, Everest. The next one is Everest, the highest in the world. Ooh. Okay, yeah. talk about preparing for this. People in Everest. Talk about this one. This one, this is one of the most amazing and challenging mountains I've climbed in my life. It took me two months to climb it. Tell people where Everest are just in case they don't know, because we never know who's listening and we try to educate people also. Where is Everest located? Uh, it is in border with Nepal and China. Uh, so it's in Tibet. You can climb it from Tibet and you can climb it from Nepal. Um, free I Tibet. Free Tibet. <laughs> yeah, free Tibet. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, we like to protest as Albanians. Free. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but so there is south and north side, and some people go and climb from the north side because they want to escape climbing from south side because there is a huge Kumbu ice fall. If you go from base camp to camp one, there is an ice fall called Kumbu, and it is like boo every five minutes, uh, a huge ice falls, ice fall breaks. Like maybe icicles, like, so big icicles. Yes, ice ice is that fall that can hurt you, kill you. No, they are like. Um, it is a glacier, like, um, it's not like ice, ice, you have to climb in it. Okay. It's like a glacier, okay. but it's not regular great glacier. And okay. it just breaks while you're climbing. It just breaks. It just breaks. So the know? ice chips as you're using yeah. the hammers to climb. Yeah. It, it just, it just you never, it, it won't hold it. So it's very, you can die. It's very dangerous. Yes. yes so you, you go from a different <laughs> side. Yes, so they want to avoid this one, but we went to, to we climbed it from some side and we had we went through Combice all t uh, three times because when you have to climb Everest, you go with climb you climb it with rotation. First, you go from base camp to camp one, and then you come back, sleep like three nights, and then you go camp one, camp two, then you come back again to base camp and sleep again, and then you go for the summit push. You know, you go up and down and up and down for your body to acclimate. Um, and Everest was a very dangerous one. Uh, it was very hard the, to do the acclimatization. A lot of people in my group failed to climb it because of the altitude sickness. Uh, one uh, person in my group where I spent two months with him, we, we ate on a table, we climbed together and everything. Unfortunately, he died while coming back to the, from the summit. Wow. So someone yeah. on your journey with you. Died. We celebrated his birthday on Everest Base Camp. Like I sent him happy birthday, and then after three weeks he just died. And that and, and that's because of what he did on Everest. Yes, uh, he got. How old, how how old was he? If you don't mind me asking. He was he was sixty he sixty something, and this was his last one. But I've seen uh, five dead bodies on Everest, and I had to sit on them. I have to, to, to be, uh, sometimes I had to sit on them to uh, pass, you know, through them because they were uh, just sitting in the middle of the trail, in the middle of the rope. Frozen. You know? Yes. And they just they leave have, them there? Yes. They just, you have to pay money. If you want your body to get back, you have to pay money. Uh, you, if you, you want, they can like leave your body there or to put it in a crevasse, to burn. It depends how much you pay. Because before you go to Abras, you have to sign what you want to do with your body if you die. <laughs> yeah. This is crazy, dad, man. This is freaking crazy. My dad said, like, when I received the email from the guide, what do you want to do with your body if you die? He was like, I had, I had to sign for you, for, for my little baby. He was like, and he just, he just said to him, it's not on the project to happen anything bad, you know? And he said, come on, Nita, you have to sign what you want us to do with your body. It, just, it is crazy. Uh, and a lot of people, when they saw dead bodies on the way, they were like shocked, you know? And they didn't want to go, you know, to, 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 to go to the top. And they wanted just to go back because they were like, if this guy or this girl died here, I can die here too, here too so I just want to go back. But I prepared myself that much that I didn't care. Like I saw. So you body. saw five dead, frozen people yes. that tried to climb Mount Everest. Yes. How were they frozen? Were they sitting? I mean, I mean, I, I know it's hard to ask you, but I'm just very curious. I'm going to ask you, what um, what, did, what were these bodies look like? Were they frozen with their gear on? I mean, um, 
it was one it was one girl uh maybe 15 20 meters from summit uh she died from hypothermia she was like me they, how people and her sherpa told us she was like um she 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 was very tired and she didn't have any oxygen because your 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 oxygen can be gone because you use it. The tank. And then yes, and then she just sat there and the sure passed. It was like, do you want to go? Do you want to come down? She was like, no, just leave me here. And they leave you there. No one can do anything to you. Like you have to push yourself. And then she died from hypothermia because her gloves were off. Like she was unzipped. Like you know, because of the hypothermia, she was all like trying to 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 uh, take her clothes off like the jumpsuit and everything uh one of them was uh covered with snow like you can see her face and like her chest and like her boots but she was partly partly covered with snow and and it was um frozen three of them were in the middle of the rope and people were trying like the sherpas were getting their bodies back to base camp and it and this one and it was one it was sitting there in the middle of the rope like it is alive he was just sitting like this you know he had his goggles on <laughs> his backpack on everything he just he was just frozen and it was very it was very scary because while coming back from the summit it is Hil uh, Hillary stop you know it is with this part and I uh, I don't know what happened with my foot I couldn't reach um, I couldn't reach the, the 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 rocks and the snow there, and I just slipped and I fell, and I, like I almost got into his backpack and into his, you know, into him, you know, and that was really scary. I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, please, please, please save me, save me from from being away from him. But I prepared myself and I didn't care. I'm like, yeah, this one died. I don't want to die, so let's just begin. Let's just continue with. Uh, it's our journey and i and i actually asked my dad what what would you what would you do if something happens to me and he was like okay if something happens to you i would like just jump or i would cut my rope or something and i would you know i cannot live without with with that 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 thing and i'm like no that's crazy because if something happens to me you have to go back home to my mom and my my brother because it is different if they lose one person it is different if they lose two persons. so what did you want them to do if something happened to you to leave you on the mountain or bring you back to leave me i'm like you have to, he signed to bring me back through the mountain i'm like you have to sign to leave me on the mountain because because i want my body to rest on the mountain because i love the mountain and, and he was like Nika, don't talk like this like you're not resting anywhere you're coming back home with me stop talking bad things but I'm like, if something happens to me, I have to go back home. And if something happens to you, I would go back home. And if you don't go back home, I will never forgive you for that because of my mom and my my, my brother. Like you have to go and be there for them. And there was this moment on our sunny day where my dad was uh, was out of his oxygen and the Sherpas, they, they refused to change his oxygen. They were like, yeah, let's go and climb a little bit more. And he was like, he could, he could not walk, he, was, he could not climb. He was like, oh, like I cannot breathe and stuff. And I got into a big fight with the Sherpa. I'm like, you have to change his oxygen bottle because can and you And what are they called, body? Sherkas? Sherpas. Sherpas. Yes. These are your I'm guides, like, the guides in Kilimanjaro. Local ones, yeah, local ones. And then they changed his oxygen bottle. So everything was, do it was going good until my oxygen mask froze. Yeah. Like these things happened to me, like my oxygen mask froze. That was crazy. And I couldn't breathe. And I told my Sherpa, uh, I cannot breathe. My oxygen, my mask is frozen. It was like, yeah, mine is too. Mine is frozen too, but yes, let's climb it. And I'm like, I am not you. Like you can climb it because Sherpas, a lot of Sherpas can climb without oxygen because they live like the, the, the highest village is in almost 5,000 meters. And they they are used to living in very high altitude and elevation. So he was like, yeah, let's climb it. I'm like, I cannot breathe. Like you have to help me because I cannot breathe. And he didn't care. He was like, yeah, let's just climb it. Sounds like so these I'm guys like, are like, assholes no offense uh, yeah but they, they try but they cannot like how many people they, die they how many pe life. how many people die trying to do this 
a lot. This year, the year that I climbed, 11 people died. Yes, 11 people died. So you go died. through all of this and you make yeah. it to the top. Yeah. Of Kilimanjaro, I mean of uh, Mount Everest. You make it to the top of the highest mountain on earth. Mm -hmm. What does that feel like, man? Mm, it feels good. It feels nice. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot describe it. Uh, I just couldn't believe it. I'm on top of the world. You know, I'm like, wow, I am on top of the world. And I'm like, you're on top uh, of the highest place on yes, this yes, planet. Yes. N no one is high. No one is like, you know, you are the high. You are on top of everything. Are you the youngest female to ever do that to that mountain no. by itself? Uh, and Mount Everest? No, there are a lot of not a lot of there are some younger than me who climbed Everest. Maybe the locals or whatever. People yes, are... the locals. Yes, the locals. There is this, this girl, this girl, I don't know how old was she when she climbed it, but uh, she was uh, from Nepal and she was younger than me. I know this one. But it feels amazing. It feels really good. Like you feel that you have accomplished something really big and you say like, I climbed this mountain and nothing can stop me in the future, you know? Like whatever happens to me, not like not only on the mountains, but whatever. Whatever and happens on the and on, on, on know, back down there in the real world, I can take it. Yes, I can take it, and that's a, a really good feeling. Is there ever that feeling when you finish? Where you're like, damn, I gotta go back down now. <laughs> do you ever get that? <laughs> do you ever get that feeling? Like, damn, okay, I made it here, but now I gotta go all yeah. the way down. <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, almost every time. I'm like, I'm like, boo damn bring me a helicopter i want to go from by helicopter down to base camp but yeah you have yeah to, but you have to you, finish it too to make it real yeah, you have to get down this, right this, uh let me tell this is very interesting if uh the uh, the helicopter can fly only to camp two of everest you cannot fly higher and uh because of um people sometimes can get no can get frostbite or they can get can get sick so uh, the helicopter come and get them from camp two or camp one to send them down to Kumb to uh, to the city. And if you climb Mount Everest and you go back to camp two or camp one, and the helicopters comes and pick you up there, and you don't go by your foot, by your feet into the base camp, uh, you don't get the issue that you climb Mount Everest, even though you were on the top. If you don't come come back to base camp, you don't get the the paper that you climb the highest. Well, well it's a good it's a good way to keep business going too. But still, I, I think there has to be a standard, and I think that's a fair standard. You got to make it back.